Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial. And in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, I thought for our last lesson in our in depth look at Avid's Marquee Title Tool, we would talk about lighting. Now, lighting doesn't work exactly the same as it would in a program like Adobe's After Effects. There are a few little ins and outs that you're going to need to know to harness the power of this great feature inside of Marquee and to get your animations or your still frames to look exactly the way that you want them to. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Symphony and let's get started. Okay, let's just alt tab into Avid's Symphony. Obviously a command and tab for all of my Mac friends out there. Okay, so what we're going to do is simply navigate up to clip. We're going to come down to new title as we've done so many times in the past and what we're going to do is obviously select the marquee title tool now what we're going to do is just create an extruded text element here so i'm just going to switch my view back to show me all the toolbar buttons and let's just type in oh let's type in creative cow why not let's make sure i spell that correctly here creative cow there we go of course go with my favorite font impact there we go and we just want to select everything here and let's just turn my saves on just so we can make sure we stay within save title here and let's just increase the size of the text very nice and of course we want to extrude this element now what I'm going to do first here is I'm just going to adjust the kerning in between these two letters by simply holding alt on Windows option on the Mac using the left and right arrow keys there we go we can even adjust it here between the E and the A it's looking pretty good and like I said what we're going to do is we're going to extrude this element so instead of navigate navigating up to windows and coming down to our properties I'm simply going to use the transform properties that I already have open here we're just going to switch to the effect tab and let's give our text a bit of a bevel why not select bevel and of course we're going to extrude the text now we all know after going through many tutorials inside of marquee that the only way to get this text to look the way that we actually want it to is it is to enable lighting so let's do that what we're gonna do is we're gonna head right over here to the quick title properties and right under the main surface I'm simply gonna select enable lighting just like that once I do we now have the default lighting layout for your marquee composition now how do we exactly see what's going on with lights well I know if you're paying attention in previous tutorials you'll know how to do this if you're jumping in right now you're about to find out you're gonna notice on the toolbar on the left hand side we have some tools obviously now we're in animation mode and I know that because I can see the animation film strip icon right there I can easily come back up and just switch back to basic just like such the only problem is then obviously everything gets reset not too long to rejig everything back and like I said right down here we have some tools on the left hand toolbar and one of which looks like appropriately enough a light Now you'll see that I can click on the light tool button or the shortcut on the keyboard is L on both Mac and Windows and as soon as I do this icon appears here and you'll see that as I grab it I can zing it around the frame and the light gets adjusted but what exactly is this light and what exactly is going on with it well there's a couple ways that we can get in we can do some basic manipulation of this light and then we can do some more advanced manipulation so let's do some basic manipulation of this light now obviously the most basic manipulation is just to simply grab it and drag it wherever we want it to go the only problem is it doesn't exactly tell us what's going on because right now we're looking at the scene so we're not really looking at anything front top left or right and how we do that is on windows what we're going to do is we're going to hold control and i'm going to use eight five two four and six on the numeric pad eight is to obviously switch to top view five is to switch to the scene view two is to switch to front view four is to switch to the left view and six is to switch to the right view you'll see that by utilizing this uh, scene layout this is a very easy way to get in and figure out exactly where your light is and what is going on with it so for example in this case if I want the light to be a little bit higher up but what I want is it to actually be right over top of creative cow you'll see I moved it up to roughly where I wanted it to go and what I'm going to do now is simply hit control and 8 command and 8 for all my Mac friends on the numeric pad and what I can do now is just simply position the light right over top of creative cow so when I switch back you'll see a very different lighting setup and really the only way to do this is using those individual scene views or the individual views front left right and top you'll see it gives us a very dynamic lighting layout and you'll see now when I move left and right this is moving the light parallel directly over top of the text very nice 
Now, I know you're probably thinking, well, well, what kind of light is this? How do we get in and figure out exactly what we're dealing with? Well, the easiest way to do that right off the bat is to simply right click on that light. And you'll see that we have a few options. Once we right click on it, we can add more lights. We can delete the current light. We can enable lights. We can disable them. Or last, but certainly not least, is light type. And you'll see that if I come down to light type, I have three different types of light. I have infinite, I have local, and I have spot. Now, right now, we're set to local. But what is the difference between these three layouts? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch to infinite for a second here. And you'll see that right now, the light actually has a little number one beside it, meaning this is the first light in the scene. If I was to add another light, that light would become number two, number three, etc. Now, the easiest way to think of an infinite light is to think of it like the sun. Now, if you think of it like the sun, you're going to see what I'm going to do here is just switch to my top view here for a second. And I'm just going to reposition this just sort of up and over here. Maybe we'll move it a little bit farther out just so you can see exactly what's going on here. There we go. So you can see as the light moves, things get brighter, just as if the sun was moving across this text element. Okay, what I'm going to do now is right click, I'm going to come down to light type, and I'm going to switch to local. The easiest way to think of local is almost like a candle. And the way a candle distributes light, you'll see it's sort of omnidirectional. It's taking light and it's sending it out in equal directions from this one point right here. Now really, in most cases, the two lights you're going to stick with are, in this case right here, you're going to stick with local or you're going to use a spotlight. Now, with spotlight, we obviously have two things that we're going to be adjusting, two parameters. One is the actual light itself. Light can easily be controlled by simply grabbing it and dragging it wherever you want it to go. But because this is a spotlight and you're actually pointing it at something, you're actually going to want to animate or manipulate the point of interest as well. Now, in this case, I can't see the point of interest. So what I'm going to do is just switch back to top view, control and eight on the numeric pad, command and eight from my Mac friends out there. And you'll see there's the point of interest right there. So what I'm going to do is just reposition it just in front of the text. I'm going to switch to front view just so that we can make sure that it's positioned right dead center. And you'll see now if I switch back to the scene view, we now have a spotlight pointed right at the light. And we can actually get in if we wanted to and animate this light moving across our text like such. So you'll see three different types of lights, three different functions of them. And obviously we can get in and we can add other lights at any time. So for example, if I wanted to right click and say add light, you'll see the default light that it creates is a duplicate of the one that's currently there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch this to infinite here. And I think what we're going to do is we're just going to position this directly underneath the element like such. Now you'll see the point of interest is always right dead center. And you'll see that you can actually create some very cool lighting setups just like such. And of course we can switch back here and animate our spotlight's point of interest moving across that text and light this element directly from the bottom. Now, of course, I could also disable this light right here and just go with this very cool layout of the light on the bottom. And as the light moves up, you'll see everything gets illuminated. Sort of a very dramatic lighting effect that we have there. And it can move off to the top as well. And you'll see that if I move up here a little bit, you can see the light is shining down right on top of Creative Count. If I switch to top view, you can see there is the light beaming down on top of it. But now there must also be some more in-depth parameters for us to work with. What I'm going to do is just switch back to scene view here for a second. And I'm actually going to delete this infinite light because I'm not going to use it. I'm just going to use the spotlight here. Just grab the spotlight. We should actually enable it. And I'm just going to repoint it back at our element here. Very cool. And to get to the more in-depth parameters, what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate up to Window. I'm going to come down to Properties. And of course, we do have the properties for the lights. Now, you'll see a lot of the properties that are in here are stuff that you know you would think that you can just grab and drag. But sometimes you want to be more precise. So let's take a look at all the different parameters that we can adjust in here. First parameter is obviously to enable or disable the light. The second parameter is, of course, we, know we just looked at this when we right-clicked on the light, is what type of light is this? And you can just get in and quickly switch back and forth between all the different lights to see what type of lighting effect you get with each of the different looks. We can obviously get in and adjust the color of the light if we wanted to. Very nice. And we can adjust its intensity. 
Very cool. You can also adjust the light's position right from here. Now, this is very good when you're going to get in and actually do some animation. If you just want to have something move precisely along the x-axis, no problem. Just undo that along the y-axis, no problem. Or even moving in and out like such. So you can create a very dramatic lighting effect just kind of like this with the light behind it moving in to the front. Very cool. Now, of course, because we are talking about a spotlight, we also have the ability to get in and adjust the target or the point of interest, just like such. Now, obviously, if I switch to a local light, these are disabled, the spot target, the spot size, and the fall off. Fall off and spot size are only obviously relevant inside of a spotlight. Now, see if I switch to infinite, we have the same uh, same parameters grayed out. We don't have access to them, like I said, only in Spotlight. So let's switch back to Spotlight for a second here. And let's talk about the last two here. And what I'm going to do is just repo this light right about here, I think, just to sort of show off these last two parameters. Now, the last, uh, second last one is Spot Size. You'll see if I grab it, I can actually adjust the width of the Spotlight, the cone angle here to get really precise, very thin cone, or very wide, very widespread. And you'll see, again, this is a parameter that can be animated. So you can start at nothing and have your text revealed like such. And last but certainly not least is the spot fall off. Now, the spot fall off basically is dealing with the intensity of the light. You'll see the higher the value, the less intense it is at the point of interest. The lower the value, the more intense it is at the point of interest. Now, in most cases, what you're going to do is leave this at 50%. That's normally what I do. I normally leave spot fall off on its default parameter. Now, let's talk about something else here. What I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to, uh, I'm going to rejig this light. I'm just going to make it a local light here just for a second, just so I can get a good look at everything. And what I want to do is, much like we did in the previous lesson, I'm just going to create a rectangle here. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that inside of Marquee, even though technically you're working in 3D space, these elements don't interact with each other the way that they would in a 3D application. So, for example, let's say I was going to, let's get, well, let's just create a brick wall, just like we've done before. I'm just going to grab old bricks, drag them and drop them there. And let's get in and let's adjust our textures here. I'm going to come up to Window, to Properties, again to Surfaces. And let's just adjust the scaling of everything here. We want to make sure that we're obviously tiling everything out. And we're just going to shrink this down here a little bit. Very nice. Okay, that's not too bad. Now you'll see that no matter what happens here, no matter how much I adjust this Z position to send this back in Z space, it never actually passes behind the creative cow. Now if I switch to top view here, let me just switch back to the selection tool here. What I'm going to do is just switch to top view. You're going to see what you think is the text, and right behind it is that plane I created. But you'll remember I said it sent it way back in Z space. So let's actually zoom back by hitting Control and minus on Windows, Command and minus on the Mac, and you're going to see that the wall is actually way back in Z space where it should be. Well, you'll see that what we actually have going on here is not really 3D, even though it is. It's kind of like a faux 3D. We still have things in layers and stacking order is still very important inside of marquee i'm just going to switch back to scene view you'll see if i select the creative cow word mark that i created and i say object bring forward you'll see it now appears in front of that wall you'll see again if i select that wall and i put its position its z position here back at zero the wall is big again. So what we end up having to do is to do, even though we are working in 3D, we have to fake it a little bit. Now, what's important to keep in mind with Marquee is that Marquee is actually a fairly old application. We're probably talking about, I don't know if I had to guess, maybe about 10 years old, and it really hasn't been updated much since its inception that long ago. So you can see we're still dealing with some very powerful titling capabilities for an application that's this old. Basically, its main, uh, its main thing was that it was integrated into Media Composer and Symphony for you to work with it inside the application, where, like I said in previous tutorials, Marquee used to be its own separate application. But we can still create some pretty cool looking stuff using things laid out the way that they are. So let me show you how we're going to do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually send some shadows from Creative Cow back onto that wall. So let's do that. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to select the light. You'll see we have the light right here. I can move it around. But you're going to notice that nothing's happening on this wall back here. Well, why is that? Well, if I select the wall, there we go right there, you'll remember that I enabled the lights or the lighting on the Creative Cow element, Creative Cow element but I haven't done that on the wall. So let's do that. You'll see now, once I select the light and start moving it, 
what happens to one happens to the other. And what's also important to keep in mind is that if I select this element here, we navigate back to Window, we come down to Properties, we come down to Surfaces. You'll see right now that wall is very shiny. Well, I can actually adjust that so the wall is not very shiny at all. But the Creative Cow is still going to be just as shiny as it was before. So you see, we have the ability to get in and really have these lights manipulate elements separate or independently of each other. But let's actually create uh, a little bit of a scene here, a little bit of a mood. What I'm going to do is right click, I'm going to say light type, and I'm simply going to select spotlight. Well, let's position this spotlight down here. Let's have it sort of casting off into the distance like that. Well, you'll see that even though the light is shining, no shadow is actually being cast onto this wall. We have to fake it a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to select creative cow, and I'm going to turn drop shadow on. What we're going to do is just position the drop shadow off in the distance like such. And what we're going to do is just soften it up, just like that. And what we could do is we could actually animate this element, like I said before. What I'm going to do is just switch back to lighting mode here. And we could take the spotlight. Let me just move our frame down a little bit here. I could take the spotlight, animate it over like such. Then all I have to do is simply select my creative cow and just adjust that drop shadow like such to create a very realistic lighting element inside of Marquee. So I hope this tutorial has shown you that you know the lighting inside of Marquee is actually a very powerful tool, especially if you do things like getting in and adjusting reflectivity on certain layers so that you don't get the same look on one element that you get on the other. For example, in this case, we have a brick wall that's not going to be very reflective, but maybe our text is going to be a brushed metal, and we want to have that being very reflective. You can get in, and you can use these lights and position them, and then get in and manipulate the elements independently as to how you want them to reflect light or accept light. And you'll see that even though we're not really dealing in true 3D space inside a marquee, you can easily get in and fake that and create elements that normally you'd only be able to create inside of a compositing or inside of a 3D application. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.